All right, hello everyone, this is John, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the mean and other descriptive statistics when you have missing values within your data set. And I'm going to show you how to do that in R Studio. So pretty much this video is going to cover two parts. The first part is going to be analyzing uh, descriptive statistics using only complete cases. And what I mean by complete cases is that we're going to omit any cases that have missing values and not include them within our analysis. So when we're calculating the mean, any case that has a missing value will not be included. This is also known as list-wise deletion, which just means we're only analyzing complete cases. Any case missing a value is not going to be included. Uh, but then in part two, we're going to actually include these cases that have missing values. So we're going to replace any cases with a missing value with a value. And this is also known as mean substitution. So if a case within our data set is missing a value, we can use the mean from all the other cases to replace that missing value with a value, which will be the mean. So that's pretty much how that this video is going to be laid out. Part one, we'll look at a method of list-wise deletion and how to do that to analyze for mean and descriptives. And then part two, we're going to replace missing values with a mean and real analyze the same mean and descriptives. So let's jump in to R. As you can see, I've already uploaded uh, my data set, which is here, data one. I'm reading in a CSV file, and it's over here in the global environment. Uh, but let's quickly look at the data set just to see what we are working with. So this is a very simple data set. It's just a pre-post test, and we have 10 individuals who took part in this study. They were measured at pre-test, and then they were measured at post-test. And the key thing here to look for is uh, any missing values. And we can see under individual ID number five, they completed their pretest with a value of four, but they never completed the post test and have a missing value. And uh, that's what we're going to do now is analyze the descriptives for this data and see how the missing value could impact your results. So the first thing we might want to do is actually look at pre-test and post-test measures. So um, here we have, um, we're going to calculate the mean and other descriptives for pre-test and post-test. So here are my, um, here's my code for calculating the descriptives for pre-test. So we're going to calculate the mean, the minimum, uh, the max or maximum, and then the standard deviation. So we have all these here. Let me just quickly clear the uh, environment below. I'll click run these. And here we are. So from our pre-test, we are easily able to calculate the mean, which is 4, the minimum, which is 3, and the maximum is 5. And then also calculate the standard deviation, which is 0 0.666 continued. So very easy to do here. We're able to calculate the pre-test descriptives, no problem. But let's say now we want to calculate those post-test descriptives as well. So let me just clear this. And I'm going to run these as well, the post-test. So keep in mind that we have a missing value right now in our post-test results. And we'll show how that missing value could interfere with uh, analyzing descriptive statistics. And here we are. We can pretty much see with a missing value contained in the data, it does not actually calculate the mean, the minimum, maximum, or standard deviation. It's just giving us an NA uh, output, which is pretty much what we don't want. And I'm going to show you how to bypass this and really get your results. So we're going to clear that. So now let's move into part one. We're going to omit cases that have missing values and run our mean, minimum, maximum, and standard deviation. So just like the code above, uh, you can see I'm pretty much running post tests again, but there's one key feature that I'm including here that's gonna allow us to bypass missing values, and that is this part of the code here, which is na.rm equals true. Um, so this is something you're gonna have to include within your code in order to analyze uh, the mean, minimum, maximum, and standard deviation and bypass 
that missing value which is um, found within the data. So let's run this and you can see now we're actually getting the values that we're looking for. Uh, so we have a mean of 7, a minimum of 6, a maximum of 8, and a standard deviation of 0 0.707. Uh, what's important to know here though is that it's analyzing all the data except for that one case that is missing data. So if I quickly go back to the data set, data one, it's analyzing all the data except for individual ID number five. Because they don't have a post-test uh, result here, it is pretty much bypassing them and giving us our means and descriptives. So the next thing to do, is, um, I'm gonna show you another method on how you can bypass missing values, which is called uh, listwise deletion. So the idea here is we have our data one, which is our, our data set we added into R, but we're gonna use a new function here called na.omit. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna reprint all of our data, but omit any cases that have missing values. And the idea here is I'm gonna create a new data set, which is gonna be called data two, na omit data one. And all this is gonna do is create a new data set and only contain cases that are complete and no missing values. So let's run this. And now let's check data two to see what it looks like. So here we are, uh, we have our ID pretest, post test, but one key thing you can see is that ID number five is no longer being included. It's not a complete case and using NA omit, we're able to remove it and have a data set that contains only complete cases. So now that we've done that, I'm going to pretty much show you uh, a method. We're going to compare the two data sets now, a paired samples t-test. We're going to conduct this on data one, which is our original data set with a missing value, and then on data two. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, in many cases, um, individuals might assume if they just leave those missing values in that these paired tests or like a t-test, for example, is still going to account for that individual when it technically does not. So uh, we're, regardless of whether you omit cases or not, some of these tests are designed to omit those cases automatically because they cannot conduct an analysis with incomplete data. So the first one here is a t-test, paired samples t-test on data one. We're gonna compare pre-test and post-test and it's paired true, yes. So we can run that one. And then we're gonna run the second one which is on data two where we have only complete cases. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is just to compare the results between the two, just so people could see uh, what type of output each one provides. Okay, so we've run both. I'm gonna just blow this up a bit so we can look at it. So we have data one above here. We could see it's significant. It's quite significant. It's definitely below uh, 0 0.001. And we have our T value here our degrees of freedom, and our confidence intervals. Uh, why I'm showing this is because if we look at data two, where we omitted um, ID number five, participant number five, we can literally see that the values are not changing whatsoever. Uh, the P value is the same, the degrees of freedom are the same, and so is that T value and the confidence intervals. They're all the same. And all I wanted to show here is that regardless of whether you omit cases or not, um, many analysis will omit them automatically as well. So it's something to keep in mind so individuals don't just assume, well, if I just ignore those missing cases, the tests themselves will include it when they actually won't. So whether you do list-wise deletion or not, many of these tests will not include missing cases. So now we're gonna quickly go to part two now. And part two is now we're gonna replace cases with a missing value uh, with a value. And this is also known as mean substitution. So ideally, you only want to be analyzing data that have complete cases. But let's say for some reason you want to include all your cases and you don't want to lose a case that has a missing value, then one method you could do is replace those missing values with a mean from other participants or from other values within your data. So for this method, you're going to actually have to use a library, uh, GAM or GAM. 
you have to run library game and uh, and now we're going to create a new data set and here it says here na game replace and what this function is going to do uh, actually know what let me quickly show the data again data one uh, let's just blow this up a bit what this function is going to do is that where this missing value is na under id 5 it's going to use all the other values from post test to create a mean and replace that value with a mean and the reason i'm putting this into a new data set data number three now is because anytime you're running analysis where you're manipulating the data set and adding values you should always have a complete case data set available to compare your results with because um, right now it's going to manipulate our data set and add values where NAR so you should have an extra copy so you can look at the differences between the two so let's run data 3 NAGAM replace data 1 and now we can run data 3 to see what it looks like and as you can see here under ID 5 which had a missing value under post test it's now giving it a mean of 7 and that's the mean from all the other values now replacing that missing case so this is another method on how to deal with missing values uh, within your data but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun my paired samples t-test on data 1 with a missing value and a paired samples t-test on data 3 uh, where I now use this mean substitution uh, method and the reason I'm running the two is just like in part 1 I want to show how different the results could be using this method so I'm going to highlight both and run and now we're going to quickly look at the results so in this situation you can actually see there is some slight differences between the two the degrees of freedom is automatically going to change there's no surprise there because we're adding a case that wasn't added before but you can see how the t value has changed between the two and even though the p value is still significant it has changed quite a bit as well um, and so have the confidence intervals the point I'm trying to make here is that when you do a mean substitution or you start filling in missing values with a value, you can start manipulating the results of your study or the natural results that could be found within your data. So here, what I'm doing is I'm comparing the original data set with my manipulated data set, hence the mean substitution, to see how much the results would differ. Um, ideally, you might want to do this with data two. So instead of here, it says data one, pre-test, post-test. You might want to do it with data two because that's only complete cases. But with the t-test, it automatically only measures complete cases. But the idea here is you really want to be able to compare any manipulated data set to an original data set. So although the results did not substantially change here, there is many situations where a mean substitution could inflate p-values and could alter the results quite drastically and if they do you need to be able to catch that beforehand uh, before reporting results from a manipulated data set so just to quickly shrink this down uh, so yeah there is some minor differences between the two tests between data one and data three or data two and data three which show the same thing so mean substitution can be used but it does have the possibility to alter results. And that's why you should always compare results between the two data sets. Um, and that's what I've mentioned here. A good rule is to always compare a complete cases data set where no manipulation took place to a manipulated data set such as data three here. Um, so that is the, the video. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any other comments or suggestions, please let me know. Uh, much appreciated.